Ciao Jewelry Makers, I'm Joey Balistrieri and today on my work table I am working on my second piece of jewelry using the Pantone Color of the Year for 2024 which was called is called Peach Fuzz and so the first project that I did I used these beads and this is what I have left over from that pot project and if you have not seen that video and you are watching this I can leave a link below this is the cuff bracelet that I made using all shades and tints and tones of the Pantone peach fuzz color for 2024 and I ended up adding a magnetic clasp to mine after I finished the piece and I just really love it it's beautiful so in this piece I added in some of the things that I know are coming for 2024 which is pearls will be a big trend in 2024 cuff bracelets will be a big trend and also this beautiful color so I have decided to do a second piece I've done a little sketch and it will incorporate some of the beads that I used in my other project I'm going to make use of another one of these little magnetic clasps and I have a length of solid brass chain that I had in my stash I bought this at the Orlando bead show a couple of months ago and it's just something I really like so that will be how I finish off the piece that I'm about to start and I will also be using a length of 20 gauge beetle on round German style medium temper wire it's the wire that I most frequently use so I have already cut a little length of that and I am going to incorporate some other trends that I am seeing coming in for 2024 so along with the color of the year we are going to see pearls so I think I'm going to continue with the pearl design and I had actually created this little drop thinking that I might add it to my cuff bracelet but I ended up liking the bracelet just as it is so I may incorporate this in the piece that I'm working on and one of the big trends for 2024 is going to be mixing gold and silver so I already love to mix metals and I know many of you do too and once you start doing it it's just really fun and it's very it just opens the possibilities when you're making a piece uh, and you can use utilize more of your supplies so I had this little Potomac bead mix and I was going to show you I don't know what I did with the bag but anyway one another youtuber that makes jewelry sent me this little Potomac bead mix and the colors were not right for my project but these little silver check glass pinch beads were in that mix so I've taken them all out and I think that's going to be my mixture of gold and silver in this piece so the other thing that I plan to do is add a contrasting color to this piece so I decided to get my color wheel out and sort of play with the colors so our peach fuzz color is right in here it is a derivative of orange and so a contrasting or complementary color when you're using a color wheel is the one directly opposite so in these shades like if I go here to the red orange strip these are the Pantone colors the tones and tints and hues of the Pantone color for the year so as you saw and can even see in my other project that I did there are quite a few shades of the color of the year but if I come directly across I am seeing the periwinkle blue the primary color blue and like I am seeing the blues and blue greens and even like some of that purple blue and so that is what I went into my stash and pulled some beads that I liked and I have to tell you if I had not started playing with my color wheel again I haven't used it in a long time and I went to pull beads for this project what I came up with is not what I would have done if I had just gone and started searching for combinations so the color wheel really helped me this time 
to come up with something really amazing. I'm just going to grab the whole bundle of beads that I pulled from my stash and show you the different shades of the complementary color to the color of the year. I have not worked out my pattern yet, but I just wanted to sort of lay them over the peach and let you have a look at how beautiful that is. I've had them on my work table since yesterday, and I've just been kind of looking at these two colors together, and I think it's going to be fabulous. And I think a piece of jewelry like this is going to be beautiful for casual wear with denim, and oh my goodness, I am really excited to make this piece. So I'm going to cut some of these off the strand and work out my little bit of a pattern and I will be back and again I'll link the video to this beautiful cuff bracelet if any of you are interested in seeing that so let me organize myself and I will be right back I have returned and I bet this looks crazy to you uh, I'm really happy with it I'll tell you I spent maybe an hour playing with the beads because I had so many beads to choose from. I was having so much fun taking things out of my stash and playing with my color wheel. And so I had a lot of elements to choose from. So it took me a little bit of time to narrow it down and create the patterns for the different sections of my necklace. And so I, I know this looks crazy, but I, and I've never made this before. It was something that I had in my head and I sketched out. So I'm excited to put it together and see how it looks. So I did narrow it down and I really wanted to use these glass beads because these are the closest thing that I had in my stash to the Pantone color of the year, the, the actual peach fuzz. And then these beautiful blue cylinder beads are also a really good match to the complementary color on the opposite side of the color wheel. And I had some of these little, um, I get they're not really mermaid glass, but they have an AB finish and they go really well with those cylinder beads. And I just really settled on having a little sprinkling of the pearl elements. And there is a tiny bit of silver appearing here and there in the piece. So I felt like I really settled on a good combination that incorporates the trends I was trying to make this piece contain and also just you know not have too many elements it, it gets too busy when there's too many things going on so the first thing i want to show you is this is going to be the focal the drop down pendant so i wire wrapped one end of it and i don't know how well this will show up but i have used some acrylic pens that i have because one of the things that i love to do is paint bead caps with these acrylic pins so i didn't put this together because we still have to do the second bead cap and i i wanted to do that with you so i'm going to take it off of here i found that it's easier to you know do it when there's nothing else in the way and i'll just show you i don't know if the camera will pick it up but i'll just show you what i did and i'll show you these really cool pins so I also really love this. I, this is just a glass bead with a coating on it that I had in my stash and I actually think it might have been left over from Bargain Bead Box. And I just, it was, it's just really close to that peach fuzz color for the year. So the pens that I have are these awesome acrylic markers and I love these pens. I got a set with 24 colors, but I believe that they go up to 36 and maybe even 48. I haven't checked Amazon in a while, but they have a fat tip for coloring larger things and they have a really fine tip and they are acrylic markers. And so look how incredible I actually found almost a perfect match to the two colors that I was working with in my piece. And the cool thing about this set is it even comes with a gold and a silver marker. So if you need to touch up when you're doing a piece, you can. So I'll link these pins below in case any of you are interested in them. But this is kind of how I have mine organized. 
and it is recommended that you store them horizontally which is counterintuitive because we always think of pins in a pen holder <laughs> up and down so we can see all the colors but it's just to protect the paint from drying out and sitting down on one end of the markers and i just love these pins i use them a lot in jewelry making because we have a lot of base metal findings and it is really awesome to be able to alter the color and to me they can give a bead cap or a metal jewelry finding the look of being enameled and it is really just acrylic paint so it says here works on various surfaces like paper canvas glass ceramic plastic wood steel so if any of the stainless steel findings that we have that it looks a bit gray sometimes and if you want to add some brightness this will adhere to that and it dries really quick it's a water-based ink and i absolutely love these when i ordered them it was just like trial and error and so i think i'm going to go back on amazon and order the set with the more colors included i started with the smaller set because i wasn't really sure how it was going to work with jewelry findings so let me show you what i did on the other bead cap i what made me get these out is I really didn't want the black wash in my piece and if you can see I love these bead caps I love the size of them for my pendant that I'm creating and I love the shape and, and the little silver edge because I wanted a little silver to appear but I just didn't so much like that black that's washed into the embossing on the bead cap so i'm going to use this the finer tip of this blue marker and i put down the cap and i mean the bead cap and not the cap to the pin and then i just very carefully went in and colored like found this little petal that i can just stay within the lines just the already embossed design and because this is such a tiny little surface this dries really fast and I have also discovered that with these acrylic markers you can let it dry for just a moment and go back over it either with another color or if you want to have more coverage and make it deeper and more opaque you can give this a second coat so this is all I do it is like coloring in an adult coloring book it is so much fun to do and believe me I am NOT a painter I do like colored pencils and things like that that's what I usually sketch with but I make a terrible mess with paint but with these pens I do not and I have so much fun and so I do like that there is a silver and a gold marker in the set because if you make a mistake in your painting you can take the metal color and go back and you know sort of touch it up and make it neater and cleaner so let me just have a look at the first one that I did and because I want them to sort of be the same and then the peach color is really pale but I liked adding that little, I don't know if the camera is picking it up at all, but I liked adding the little bit of peach around the blue and it also sort of took away the black wash that's on these particular bead caps that I have. So I just went around the blue and so on these lighter colors you can do a little I know it is very light and I, I'm looking in my camera lens and it doesn't look great but I'm just going to show you what I did and then I went around I think twice on the other one just to make my peach color a little bit darker. So that's all that you do with these. They are the most amazing pens and then I have found that if I need to go over one color. I can so like here I've lost my blue a little bit so I can go back and it will mark right over so it's very forgiving and if you're not great at painting like I am not you can still do this I absolutely love these markers as I said I'll link these below and I think I'm going to order the larger set that has even more colors than the ones that I got and so you know i've had a great time playing with my color wheel again after many years of not really looking at it and so if any of you are struggling 
with your color combinations or making bead patterns or curating your own things from your stash from beads you have that you love maybe try a color wheel try playing with that a little bit and even some markers like this where you can where you can you know have fun with the colors and see what looks good so that's pretty much already dry i mean there's there's almost no space to this so they dry really quickly and on other projects i've even found that i could take a little sanding block if i had a little bit too much color on the bead cap and just you know sand some of it off it it works really well just like we've done with vintage pieces in the past so that little bead cap is ready to go i'm going to set my markers aside and we can go ahead and make this find this centerpiece this is my focal piece on this so I don't know I was just looking in the camera and I dropped it but can you see how pretty that is it just gives us in the bead cap it almost looks like enameled but it's it's not just acrylic paint and it you know it's just a detail that I love when I look at my pendant my bead cap matches my beads and I'm crazy about that. So I'm just going to finish this wire wrapped loop the same way that I did on the other end. And then I had already made this little drop and I'm going to attach it. That's why it's not finished. I'm going to attach it to the bottom of this pendant. So there's a little bit of movement in the focal point. I like to do nice on a piece like this. I mean, sometimes I do messy wraps, but more often than not, I like to do nice, neat centered loops and clean wraps where I just fill in that space. Perfect. And get a little pair of cutters. And just want to carefully tuck in that little tail and make sure everything's straight and so now I'm going to just open my loop here and add this little drop to the bottom and then this pendant is ready have my plier turned backwards so instead of being out of my way it's in my way <laughs> that happens this wire is a little bit short so I use my pliers to get it wrapped I am so excited to see how this turns out you know sometimes I'm doing videos on pieces that I've made many times before. I have a necklace uh, tutorial coming up on some bar necklaces and I just made a ton of them. And so there's not a lot of guesswork. I pretty much know how it's going to turn out. But this is one, a design that was in my head that I don't really know how it's going to turn out. So that is going to hang in the middle. I have already created this little component it's a knotted head pin that i made with 24 gauge wire and then again the elements that appear in the rest of my design are working their way down in my pendant so i'm going to create this next one with you and so i'm sure you have seen other people do this make a little bit of a knotted head pin or it's almost like a little rosette so you can do two or three wraps around your pliers I usually do three I just to like it to be a little bit fuller and then while it's still on the tip of your round nose pliers just bend it up and then it has to this wire has to go back down through the loops that you just made and you will need your nylon jaw pliers and usually I have to use in fact let me switch hands. usually I have to use another pair of pliers to pull it nice and tight just tidy it up
that looks perfect I like that okay I'm just going to thread on in the exact same order as I did over here this little gold splatter teardrop and a pearl and a blue AB finish cylinder bead and one of these little check glass silver pinch beads and now I'm going to just do a wire wrapped loop to match this side as best I can. I have all of my tools on this side of my work table. I am a person who needs things to be neat and clean or my brain shuts down. So I had so many beads out for this project and I started to even feel a little bit overwhelmed. I enjoyed playing with them and going through them and having all of those options. But then, you know, I come to the point where I'm like, okay, these are the ones I'm going to use and I need to clean up before I can keep working. It's just the way I am. <laughs> so mm -hmm. very pretty. And cutters. And so this little drop is made I just want to tuck in my end so this little drop is made and so that's going to go right here so we can go ahead and create this first bar I'll just pick it up as best that I can and show you that is sort of where I am going with my connecting so I just had to work out my pattern a little bit here but I have to take everything off up to this point because I want to string this pendant on right in the middle and then the other half of that pattern will get strung back on and so I am going to make a little bit of a mess because when I pick this up I I actually can take this off when I pick this up I was already working on this second tier of my pendant so I have a little bit going on in this project <laughs> but that's okay it it looks a little bit complicated pretty much every project when you start it out and then as you get things connected and put together then it starts to make sense and take shape <laughs> okay so before I finish this in my pattern now it's time for another one of these vertical drops that I created so we're going to do that one together as well and I have all of the beads for that right here and I just did all of these on a piece of 20 gauge wire and I am using my three millimeter one step looper for this if you've watched any of, of my other videos you know that I really like this tool I love the way that I can hold it in the tool and have a chance to warm the wire and straighten things out and I get perfect consistent loops every single time and I know that it's going to be three millimeter or one and a half millimeter sometimes I do have to go in and close up the loop a little bit but I would do that even when I even when I make them with my round nose pliers, then I'll just work hard my loop a little bit. And so I'm ready to create the same pattern that I did here. So these also were from that little Potomac beads mix that I stole all the silver findings out of, and there was literally only four of them. So I am using up my remnants of beads. And then I'm going to just do the same thing with another three millimeter loop on the other end. It's so funny because I was just two days ago listening to two other designers have a chat and they were discussing tools and they were saying that the biggest tool they thought was a waste of money and that they, you know, hated didn't really like was the one step looper it, both of them agreed and I was listening to that thinking oh my it's one of my favorite tools <laughs> I absolutely am so glad especially when I sit and make like a long beaded chain 
I really love it. I It saves my hand when I'm doing a lot of loops and I just really love it. I only have the two sizes, but it just goes to show you that there are more than one way to do things. And as we make jewelry and design, we find our own rhythm, our own groove, and we can glean things from each other for sure, what we like and what we don't like. So it was just interesting to listen to them talk. Okay, so I'm going to add this onto that bar and then, oh, these are going on the on the loops on the end. And then let's see, let me not get lost in my pattern. And then these are the loveliest peachy bicones from Potomac Beads. Let me just see if I can show you one. They are so small. I think they're one millimeter. Let's see what they are. I have the package right here. They are four millimeter crystal apricot check glass pressed bicone beads. They are so perfectly uniform and just lovely, but the hole still fits on this 20 gauge wire and it was just creating the perfect spacer for me on this project. So now if you can see when I pick it up, obviously it's wanting to fall, but now you can see where we're going with it and i am going to use my one and a half millimeter one step looper and just duplicate the loop on this side sorry i'm reaching behind me so for this i'm just going to be very careful not to break my beads and just come up right next to that bicone and just very slowly close the tool. I just pull, make sure all my beads are pulled out of the tool before I close it down. And so I did get my, my loops not going in the same direction, but that is another thing that I love about this tool is while my component is still in the tool, I have total control over lining up my loops or straightening my piece of wire. So yeah, I I disagree about that tool, but I do know I've heard a lot of people really don't like it, but I think it's because they haven't practiced with it. They, they think it doesn't work. So anyway, everybody get those simple loops done in the best way that you can get them done. <laughs> That's my advice. <laughs> okay, now we're going to move up to this top bar and I will have to take everything off to, well, I might be able to leave my pattern strung on. Let's see, what did I do? I wanted this to go here. I might be able to do this. Ideally, I would make the loop on the bar first, but since I already strung the pattern, well, let me give it a go and see if I can get that loop on there the way that it is. I might be able to. It's not exactly the right way to do it, but <laughs> there. And so if you can see, that's another trick with this tool is to, while your, your wire and everything is still in the tool, is to bend your wire down and have a look at the mandrel inside the tool and just see that you have pulled that wire or component into the center before you remove the tool. And like I get really consistent loops and I mean this project I'm not making a lot of loops, but I get really consistent loops and I save my hand, especially when I'm sitting and doing a lot of them. So now I need to connect the bar on this end and put my final little check glass bicone on the end and now it's starting to take this pendant is kind of starting to take shape so now i'm going to just flip everything upside down so that i, I don't actually want, i want the loop to be going in the same direction so now i can get my the piece of wire stuck in my one step looper okay hold on wire out <laughs> Okay, so try to get my loops. I mean, you can see if you can if you can get your loops 
going in the same direction to begin with, that's great. But if you can't hold on to everything and they don't end up like that, you can always fix it. And also my, my trick with this is to close the tool slowly. And when you start to get down near the bead as you're closing, just make sure that your bead is not in the jaws of the tool and pull that wire down. And like I said, and I'll see up my, my wire flipped again, but there again, because it's inside the tool, I can see what I did and line up those loops, straighten that bar, and then remove the tool. And it's perfection for me. So let me just tidy that up a little bit. And this little pendant is really taking shape. It is so cute. So I wanted these drops to be down here at the bottom. And I wire wrapped the loops because of the head pins that I made, the rosette head pins. But since we have simple loops here, that is a simple matter of opening and closing like a jump ring to add those. And do this side. And I think this is going to be really pretty with my brass chain with the open links. Kind of a geometric, as I was working on the design, I was thinking, what am I going to call this piece? I don't, uh, do I call it geometric? <laughs> but it is really fun. So this is the chain that I'm going to use and I have not cut the link for adding my clasp on the back. So I am just going to match up these ends and see where the middle of it is. Okay, it's ready to go on there. So I'm just going to see where that middle link is and cut it right there. This is a brass chain but the links are soldered, so I have to lose a link. But that is okay, it's one link, it's just worth it. Now, I did take out a piece of 20 gauge wire to make silver jump rings because I have incorporated a little bit of silver here and a little bit of silver in my downward, my vertical bars, these little check glass silver spacer so there's not a lot of silver but it the bead cap and just that little tiny mixture of metal is exactly what I wanted and for my eye it is just perfect but if I don't need a jump ring I'm going to just try it and see how it hangs without a jump ring these oval loops might be a little bit big for my simple loops but I'm going to just see how it does actually it looks like it's going to be great. So I may only need jump rings for adding on my magnetic clasp. Yeah, I'm, I try not to complicate it with jump rings unless they're necessary. And so it looks like this is going to be really, really pretty and unusual and geometric. Oh my goodness, I think it's so cool. I'm really happy with the way it turned out, especially since I've been playing with beads for an hour. So let me just take this little piece of silver wire and make some silver jump rings. I want this bale making plier and I am just going to, let me switch my hand so I can turn it. I'm going to make these little bit smaller ones. Jump rings are really easy to make. I do buy them, but I really like the to use the same wires that I'm using in my piece for size and color. And, and I always make extra ones when I while I'm making these, and then I will put them in the bag where I keep that wire. And that way I know what I know what the metal is and what the gauge is of the jump rings when I go to another project. So what I usually do is find where I started and just cut one ring at a time all the way to the end of my coil in as straight of a line as I can do. <laughs> and so that last one is usually not a good one, so I'll toss that. And so I have 
couple of extra jump rings here. And this is a simple, just, just add the, the little brass magnetic clasp. I have completely lost my words. <laughs> it happens. I've been designing all morning and I've had so much fun with this project. And I'm really thrilled. It was in my head and you know, I always know how a design is going to turn out, but I'm really kind of liking it because I think it's really modern. And I love seeing a little taste of the different trends that I've been seeing on the fashion runways and I just think it's unique and so every now and then it's really fun to I make a lot of classic pieces and a lot of minimalist pieces but every now and then it's really fun to just jump outside of your box and do something artistic and you know just really fun so this has this simple little magnetic clasp and I know it looks a little bit strange on my beading mat, but I really like it. So I will put this on my little mannequin so you can see how it's hanging. And this is my crazy fun piece <laughs> for Jewelry Trends 2024 using the Pantone color of the year and its complementary color. So I hope this was interesting and it sparked your creativity and I will see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao jewelry makers.